We're almost done with our son's bedroom renovation, but he still needs a place for his TV, his gaming consoles and accessories, and some extra storage. We want it to meet the aesthetic of the rest of his room and have sliding doors to save space. And with that, let's figure out one way to make a media stand. I started with a full sheet of three quarter inch birch plywood. Lately, I've been using shop grade plywood, which has more knots, imperfections, and inconsistencies in color than cabinet grade plywood does. And it usually has an A side and a B side, the A side having less defects. This is a very oversimplified explanation of grades, but it's worth looking into when you're choosing wood for your project. I set up a straight edge and make my first cut. Even with a straight edge, I'm not very good with a circular saw, so I cut the strip 20 inches wide instead of 18 inches, and we'll cut the pieces to their final size on the table saw later. The size of the box I need to build for the media stand is 48 inches by 22 inches by 18 inches, which means that I can get the top and both sides out of one 18 inch strip of plywood. By doing this, I can make the grain flow continuously on these three pieces. I mark and cut the top and sides apart from each other and cut another strip for the bottom of the box. The table saw needs to be set to 45 degrees to cut the miters into each of these boards. I picked up this digital gauge to make sure that I'm getting my table saw blade set to exactly 45 degrees. Unfortunately, the mechanical stop on the saw stopped the blade here at 45 and a half degrees. I'm not sure if my gauge wasn't totally accurate or if the stop on the saw isn't working how it should. If anyone has dealt with a problem like this before, let me know what solutions you came up with in the comments. With the blade as close to 45 degrees as I could get it, I cut the mitered edges on both sides of the two smaller pieces. My table saw's fence doesn't extend far enough to cut the miters into my two larger pieces while they lay flat. To solve this, I made a jig that would set over my fence and let me clamp my work pieces too to keep them straight while I move them through the table saw vertically. I clamped the work piece to the jig and set the fence up so the blade would cut only the edge of the work piece and not the jig. I tested running the board through with the saw off and found everything a bit loose, so I grabbed my feather board to hold everything a little tighter. I turned on the saw and made my first cut. It came out alright, but there was some burning on the wood and a lot of friction moving the work piece and the jig through the fence, the feather board, and the blade. For the next piece, I sanded the inside of my jig so it would slide on the fence more easily and adjusted the feather board slightly. This made the rest of the cuts go a lot more smoothly, although I still did have a fair amount of burning. This media stand is going to have two sliding doors, and my next step was to cut the dados that will act as the rails for these doors. Both dados are 3 eighths of an inch thick. The first sets 3 quarters of an inch from the front edge of the board, and the second sets 3 quarters of an inch from the back of the first dado. For the top panel, both dados need to be 3 eighths of an inch deep, but the bottom panel only needs to be an eighth of an inch deep. I set my table saw blade 3 eighths of an inch high and my fence 3 quarters of an inch from the blade. I make a pass, move the fence an eighth of an inch and make another. I repeat this process until the first dado is 3 eighths of an inch wide. Then I move to my next dado and start the process again. After the top is complete, I lower the blade to an eighth of an inch and start the process again on the bottom panel. Once the door rails were done, I moved on to cutting another dado for a middle panel that will separate the media stand into two parts. I want this middle panel to be installed at the halfway point of the media stand 
but an eighth of an inch or so in either direction won't make a difference. What will make a difference is if the top dado is an eighth of an inch in one direction and the bottom is an eighth of an inch in the other. This would make for a noticeable tilt in my center partition. To avoid this, I decided to clamp the top and bottom panels together and cut both dados in one pass. I used a plunge router with a three quarter inch dado bit to make this cut. First, I set up a straight edge. I upgraded to this aluminum straight edge because the old piece of trim I was using at the start of this project wasn't giving me the best results. After securing the straight edge in place, I set the base of the router against it, turned it on and plunged it into the plywood. I went slowly and made sure to keep the base of the router tight to the straight edge, and I was able to get a clean cut, which I was very happy with. Router bits are round, and I need the edge of these dados to be square to fit my center panel. To achieve this, I used a 3 quarter inch chisel to chip away the excess wood. I cleaned the boards off and moved inside to keep this project going. Off camera, I cut rabbits into the backs of all four of my pieces. A rabbit is essentially a dado that reaches the edge of the board and can be cut in the same way as a dado can. The next step was to drill holes into my middle and side panels for shelf pins so that this media stand can have two adjustable shelves when it's complete. I used a shelf pin drilling jig from Craig for this, which made the whole process go smoother and faster than it would have without it. I was having some tear out issues, so I added some painter's tape to my next piece, and this helped a bit, but I still had some cleanup to do with sandpaper after. The next step is the glue up. I lay out all four sides of my box so that the grain flows correctly from board to board and start adding plenty of painter's tape to all the seams. I flip the tape sides over and add glue to the inside of the seams. The next step is to fold the box and tape the remaining side. I wasn't able to get a great shot of the glue up here, but if you'd like a more detailed description of this type of glue up, please check out my video, One Way to Make an Open Face Bedside Stand, which goes over this step in greater detail. I added my center and back panel while the glue was still drying to make sure everything was nice and square and fit together how it should. I clamped the box and left it for the night so the glue could dry. The next day I removed the clamps and tape, and to my surprise everything looked pretty good. Even my mitered edges which were all cut a half a degree off looked pretty good. Why? I'm not really sure. My best guess is that since I cut my side panels horizontally, they got cut at 45 and a half degrees but my top and bottom panels got cut at 44 and a half degrees from being cut vertically, and this made everything just kind of even out. The other options I can see are that my digital gauge wasn't reading totally accurately, and that all my cuts were at 45 degrees, or you know, maybe I just got lucky. The next step was to cut my doors out. I started by cutting two oversized slabs out of one piece of plywood. The doors need a tongue on the top and the bottom so that they will set into the grooves we made earlier and slide properly. I used a scrap board to make a tesk tongue to get the thickness close to being right before I made the cut on my doors. The grooves are 3 8 of an inch thick, so I made the tongues about 5 16 of an inch so they would be able to slide but not wobble around much. I tried cutting the tongue two ways, with the board held vertically 
and laying flat. Both worked, but I had more luck with the board laying flat. The bottom tongue needs to be 3 16th of an inch high so that it will stand 1 16th of an inch above the bottom groove. I've left the top about an inch high for now. This is higher than it will end up being. I'll trim it to the correct size once I know all my other measurements are correct. After cutting my tongues on the table saw, I cleaned them up with a chisel and some sandpaper. Now that the bottom tongue fit into the groove correctly, I started to shave off a sixteenth of an inch at a time off the top tongue and continued this until it fit into place and the door was able to slide. This may seem like a small step, but it felt really great to have a working sliding door, even if it didn't work perfectly yet. The tongues of the doors were tight in their grooves and wouldn't slide easily. I'd remove the door, sand the tongues and rails, reinstall the door, check for sticking points, and sand again. This went on for quite a while, but eventually I got them to slide smoothly. The doors were the most complicated part of this project. In describing them, it sounds confusing, but the process really wasn't that bad. But if you're looking to try sliding doors, I would recommend the video, 8 Tips for Perfect Sliding Doors Without Hardware by Four Eyes Furniture. It's the video I watched many times to learn this process. I'll post a link for it in the description. With both doors in place and sliding smoothly, I could move on to sanding. I used 180 grit sandpaper to start and went over the entire box, then made a second and final pass with 220 grit. The sanding process can be slow, and I know some find it tedious, but it can also be very relaxing and meditative. Just take your time and don't rush through it, and your finished piece will be greatly improved. I ran the shank of a screwdriver over the mitered edges to close any small gaps. One corner still had a visible gap. I rubbed in a little wood filler, let it dry, and sanded away the excess. I hand sanded the edges of the plywood to break them. This can't really be noticed visually, but it makes a piece of furniture more comfortable to handle. I added two coats of satin oil-based polyurethane to the entire media stand and a third coat to the outside of the top, sides, and doors as they will be touched the most. The oil-based poly darkens and accentuates the color differences in the plywood, especially the B side, which on this project was used on the inside. This is the reason I use shop grade plywood for many of my projects. Bringing out and embracing the defects and inconsistencies can in some cases make the piece more visually interesting. Instead of attaching traditional handles to these doors, we decided to cut into them to add integrated handles. We drew out a few options to see what looked the best. My first idea was to use a plunge router and a straight edge to cut the handles into the doors but I only had a three quarter inch bit, and although we liked the shape, it was a little too thin. So instead, I used this one inch Forstner bit to drill two holes on each door. And connected these holes using a jigsaw. I went slowly and followed my line to get as straight of a cut as I could.
After my handles were cut out, I went over both sides of each door with a 3 8 inch roundover bit in my router, then finally cleaned them up with some sandpaper. This media stand is going in the same room as the pegboard wall we built a few videos ago. To make them match, we decided to add the same geometric pattern onto the doors as we did to that wall. We experimented with the pattern until we were happy with it, then added two coats of paint to each shape, let them dry, and removed the tape. We bought and installed a set of six inch, two rod hairpin legs. Hairpin legs are affordable and easy to install. We buy ours from a company called Semi-Exact who we've had great luck with and who sell a lot more than just hairpin legs. You can check them out at semiexact.com. I rubbed some wax onto the tongues of the doors and to the grooves that they set in to make them slide more easily. And with that, this project was done and ready to be moved into place. This project has a very simple and straightforward design. A rectangular box with sliding doors that require no hardware, 45 degree miters, square edges, and no edge banding, just exposed plywood. But its simplicity is what we like about this project. The grain matched plywood, raw steel legs, and geometric paint pattern stand out next to its simple shape. Please feel free to share your thoughts in the comments, and thanks so much for watching.